Hey neighbor, Alicia Dolan here at Creating in My Corner. I'm so glad you could join me tonight. I'm logging in just a, a minute late. Um, I've been rushing around today and, and trying to get here. Uh, but I am so glad that you're joining me tonight and uh, I'm just glad you're here. So tonight I wanted to do um, something with this stepping stone stamp set. Let's see. It's always kind of a trick trying to get it to show up without uh, glare. Let's see. I think you can see it best like that. So I really love this stamp set. I love to make encouraging cards and send them out. So, and who doesn't want to get a little happy mail, right? So let's make a card tonight with this stamp set. I have not planned anything out. So what we're gonna do is case a card from the annual catalog. So this is the annual catalog and it actually, a lot of things in this catalog are retiring because the new one, uh, the new one starts in May and I can show you the cover of that, but I can't show you the inside. So, um, I am having an annual catalog party, so I'm going to call it, I think it's called the new catalog showcase or new catalog party. If you want in on that, make sure that you uh, are signed up for my email because an email will be coming out this week with a link to RSVP for that. I'm going to have make and takes and uh, some new product to show you there's new colors, so many new colors. Um, I can't remember what else, like an ordering special. Who knows, it's gonna be super fun and wonderful. But now back to our card for tonight. So we're gonna case a card from the annual catalog. And what I'm gonna do is go to the back where all the stamp sets are listed. There's an index in the back. I wish I could figure out how to show you all the things. Okay, and we're gonna go to the Stepping Stone stamp set. And if you're following along, you can get out your catalog and look for that. It's gonna be on page 64. So let's go to page 64 and see what we can find. 62, 63, 64. Okay, so there are, let's see. Two, there's only two options, okay, in our catalog, but we can do, uh, we can pretty much do anything. But what I'm thinking is, let's copy this one right up here in the, in the corner. We'll case this one right here. I'm going to turn the camera around and we'll get started. It's a lot easier for me to show you things uh, when the camera is in the other view. So hold on one second. I thought for sure I had the camera set up so that it was right in the right spot earlier. And I must have wiggled my table around just enough to mess it up. So here we are over at our stamping space. And here is our card right here that we're gonna copy up in the corner. So when you're casing the card, you don't have to make it exactly the same. We're just gonna kind of copy the layout of this card. So first I'm gonna decide what color do I want my card base to be? And let's see. All right, I'm gonna, this is really unusual for me. But let's go with this polished pink. Now, 
this color is retiring. So if you love pink, then now is the time when you're gonna wanna get this, this color card. Okay, and we need some designer series paper that goes with this. And I think we're gonna choose some from the hues of happiness. So let's see what we've got here. We've got flowers, uh, little, little flowers. This one looks like it's more purples. There are a few flowers back here. Let's see, I'm trying to check out all the options. I do kind of like these right here, these blue flowers. Okay, let's go with this. I haven't used either one of these pieces yet and I think that's really pretty paper. Okay, so we've got our polished pink for our card base. We've got this for the next layer. We're gonna need some little pieces of polished pink. And maybe let's go with uh, na some navy because that'll pull out some of this color here. So here's a little bit of night of navy. Okay, so we've got night of navy. We've got some polished paint. We've got our designer series paper. And then we just need some white and we'll decide on our ribbon as we go. And let's see, where did I put white? I, I was almost out of white, but I got an order just today. If, if I can find where I put it. And actually it's in my to-go pack because I was at a team meeting today and I took all my supplies to stamp, but I didn't actually do any stamping. Okay, so here we go. I can't see if you guys are commenting yet tonight, but I hope you're still watching. Um, it doesn't, I don't know if I'm even still there. If you can still see me, and you could somehow let me know, that would be wonderful. Let's see. Oh, you see me. Okay, good. Thank you, Kim. I don't know why I, I couldn't find the comments. Sometimes, uh, ah, and then I forgot to turn the sound off. Okay. All right, so we're gonna case this card. I'm gonna set this catalog to the side and we're just gonna move right along. Okay, so we're gonna cut our Polished pink at five and a half. We're gonna make a, are we gonna make a standard card tonight? I think maybe we will. Okay, so let's cut it at five and a half. Actually, maybe let's, uh, yeah. Five and a half by four and a quarter. Nope. <laughs> now see, I almost just messed this up. At four and a quarter, we're gonna score our card. We're not gonna cut it. All right, and then we can fold it right on that score line so that it folds in half, really nice. And then grab a bone folder and just press that down. You can see that I used mine on some ink not too long ago and it stained, it didn't come out. Okay, and then, we're gonna need our designer series paper. Let's see, and I wanna make sure I get some of that pink in there. Let's see, which way should we go? This way. And this way. I think this way, I think I like that better. All right, so 
We're going to put this in at four inches and cut this way. I haven't ever put, Tina, I haven't ever put pink and navy together before, but I think it's going to be really pretty. Okay, and then we're going to turn this and cut it at five and a quarter. I'm trying to answer your comments a little bit as I, as I see them. I don't know why it's hard for me to see them sometimes. Okay, so this is going to be our, this is going to be our layer right here. Let's see, should we go this way? I think maybe we should. That light last minute decision there, but it's gonna be fine. All right, now we need a piece of pink for across the center. Let's see, that's gonna be too wide because we want some of that pink to show up. So let's cut that. We know it's gonna need to be five and a quarter because we want it to go all the way across. And let's see, it's two, about two inches now. So let's cut it down to one and a half. I think that'll, I don't think we want it to be much smaller than that, but I think that'll be a pretty good size. Okay, so that's gonna go across this way. And now we need a shape to make with our Navy card stack. And let's see what shape do you got. It. Try this. Um, let's see. These are the beautiful shapes, guys. I'm thinking that's about the right size. Pink and navy are pretty together. I tend, I do like pink. Um, I tend to like a paler pink or kind of a dusty rose or a mauve. Um, But since there are lots of, uh, there are girls in my house who like pink. I have two girls, but they, they're not as into pink as they used to be. Oh no, I think something went wrong. Um, Okay, I hope you can still see me there. There was someone calling and that's not, uh, that was not what I had planned for right now. So hopefully, okay, good, Tina. I can't, it says on my end that my video has ended. So I, I'm a little sad about it, but I can still see your comments. So I'm glad you said something. Otherwise, I might have thought I it was over before I even knew it. Okay, I'm gonna use my mini cut in emboss machine to cut this out. And I wanted to show you something that I just learned recently. I wanted to try it out. So if it doesn't work, um, well, no. We'll all know. Okay, so the mini cut and emboss machine, of course, comes with two clear plates and it comes with these other plates. Let me show you. All the, all of them. Just a beep. Okay, well, that's good. Okay, so it comes with plate number one and this is supposed to be for cutting. Plate number three, that's supposed to be for embossing with standard embossing folders. And plate number four, that's for use with 3D embossing folders. So if you're familiar with the embossing folders, the standard ones 
are a bit thinner than the 3D ones. And in general, recently, I have been using my plate three for cutting as well as uh, embossing, right? The standard embossing folders. So tonight we're gonna try this plate one. I hadn't used it because uh, I wasn't comfortable with the way it cut. I always felt like wasn't going through my machine right, wasn't cutting right, but someone showed me a trick and we're gonna try it and see if it works. So what I heard was when you, when you look at on here, the way that the plates line up, it looks like they're all lined up exactly in a row. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna stagger them. So we're gonna make them like an E. So I'm gonna put this one down, this one down. I'm gonna put my paper on, my die on the top. And then when I put my next embossing folder on, I'm gonna stagger it so that on these ends, they don't meet up. See how they're kind of jagged? And now we're gonna try and run it through and see if that works. And lo and behold, look at how smooth that goes through. So what I was doing before is I was lining them all up so that they were exactly the same and try as I might, I couldn't even get it inside the machine. But now we know that if we line them up in kind of an E shape, we get, they, they work, they do work. They work exactly the way they're supposed to. And uh, that makes me much happier with that mini cut in a boss machine. Now, if you are a demonstrator, you can now order the Boho Blue Mini Embossing Machine. I wish mine was blue, but I'm probably not gonna order a new one just to get a blue one. I say probably because I might. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if it works the same way on the big one. We can give that a try at the end just to see. I don't, I don't have trouble with mine, but I don't, actually I haven't purchased the new one yet so I'm still using uh the previous one the big shot all right let's put that off to the side so now we're making some progress here with our card and we're gonna need let's see uh we need some ribbon so let's use uh, let me let me see. All right, I think I'm looking for something specific over here, and I don't know if I can find it or not. I'm looking for a specific color of ribbon. I don't see it. Okay, so let's uh, let's see. Okay, let's go with this glittered uh, organ ribbon. This is really pretty and I think it will look nice on here. If I have enough and it looks like I do, but I'm going to try to skimp a little bit and I'll show you a tiny trick about that. So we've got our ribbon, we've got our card here. I want to get my all right I put my little sponge daubers in a 
little pocket here so I could take them places with me. But I don't see that I have one that's made of navy. So I need to grab a new one for that. I tried to keep one for each uh, color and I, someone gave me these nice little labels that I could stick on here. And uh, now that there are new colors, I'm gonna need to get some labels and some new labels printed so I can make my own. Uh, let's see, I need one more sponge dauber. I keep losing track of where I where I put my extra sponge daubers. I don't know where they are. Okay. So I think what I'll do instead is I'll try really hard to use this blending brush for, for what I want to do. It's still floating around in my head, so we'll see. Okay. I am. Am I am it is embossed a little bit, Kim. If you look at that navy close, I'll bring it up close. See how it has that swirly edge around it? That is from the beautiful shape styles. And this one actually has that built right in. So I think that's kind of cool. All right, and we need our piece of white for stamping. And in the sample. They stamped uh, on a just a rectangle that goes above. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to stamp, but then we're going to fussy cut around it. So let's see. I'm going to stamp. I really like this one. Dream no small dreams, for they have no power to move the hearts of men. So let's stamp that on our, our card. Okay, and tonight I'm using my Stampin' Pierce mat and I've got a little scrap here of, uh, of grid paper. I try to cut them in fours and then they fit right on my Stampin' Pierce mat. And I need a little piece of white. Let's see. And I think what we'll do is we'll stamp in Night of Navy. Okay, so now I need a block that's gonna fit my stamp. And these are clean stamps. So I need a long skinny block. And I actually bought several of these blocks. These, um, let's see, this is size H from when I was making palm tree cards because I kept having to take the trunks off and stamp a different stamp. So if I had a couple, then I could just leave them on there. Okay, and because we're gonna fussy cut, we don't have to be super particular about putting it on straight or lining it up. Okay, so I'm gonna tap on my ink. Now, okay, the way I usually show you is tap, 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 but you can also press, but you don't wanna press hard, okay? So pressing is part of your tapping. But if you smash this in there, then the ink is going to get all up in your letters and it's a real pain to get it out and it won't stamp nice. So let's see how we did. Okay, and that looks good. So what we're going to do is the same thing again. So we practice stamped here. Now we're going to press, tap, tap, tap. 
and you kind of you usually want to move it around on your ink pad but for some reason mine is a little hilly <laughs> this ink pad so i try to keep my image either in the center or on the sides because if i put it this way uh it misses the center of my stamp okay so now that's ready and what we're going to do is lay it down press in the center now I'm not pushing hard. I'm just pressing with firm pressure and then pick it up. And there is our sentiment. I know it is nice to have a couple of extra blocks. I find that this one, uh, H and I think D are the ones that I use the most. Okay, now I'm just gonna clean that off real quick. You can see that my chamois was new, but it's starting to get used up. These chamois last a really long time, especially if um, you don't use any soap on them. What I found was I tried to wash one with soap and um, I cannot get the smell out of it. It started to smell funny. And before that, I'd had it for years and it never smelled. I've even tried soaking it in vinegar, everything. I wish I had never put soap on it. Okay, so there's our sentiment. And now we're gonna fussy cut that out. Let's see. I'll try and get you guys a little bit closer for that. And what you wanna do when you're fussy cutting is hold your paper up and you're gonna turn your paper, not your scissors. So hopefully, hopefully that's what I'm gonna show you tonight. Sometimes I do forget and not do it correctly. But I find that if I remember, I get a smoother cut and I'm less likely to cut my fingers. Anytime you can make crafting a little bit safer, I suppose that's a good thing. So this one is really smooth along the top here, so I don't have to do much turning. I could if I wanted to, if I wanted to make it like a cloud or Kind of a wobbly, bubbly shape. Or I could put a little point on it if I want it to be a word bubble. Okay, so there's our sentiment. We've got our sentiment. We've got our, uh, all our stuff. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut a piece of white to put on the inside especially because it's kind of a bright color card. If, it's, if my card is bright or really dark, I like to have a piece of white to go on the inside. If it's a light card, I don't always do that. It just depends. And it kind of depends on where I'm sending it to. Yeah, I, I don't know why, Tina, but that, um, I would definitely stick with just water uh, in the future. I, I know that for myself, I'll do that. So I would recommend you guys do that too. Oh, I was a little too close to the edge on that one. Okay, I'm gonna cut a different one and save that for a scrap. Sometimes if I try to cut a piece of paper that uh, if I'm trying to cut too fine, uh, a spot, then I end up with a, a jagged edge. That's what happened. If you guys can do you see that jagged edge, I do not like jagged edges. All right, I'm going to back out now. Nope, not like that. Uh oh. Okay, sorry, I was trying to zoom back out and I was really struggling. Okay, so now we're going to cut our inside piece for by five and a quarter. 
And this time, because I'm using a word stamp, I'm not going to stamp the inside, but we are going to do something a little special to it. Since I can't find my sponge daubers, hopefully this will uh, work the way I think it will in my head. Okay, here's our polished pink ink pad. And I'm just gonna sit this down right here. And now I'm gonna take my uh, blender brush I'm just gonna bop it here on my pink ink. Yep, and it's working. So then I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna brush these edges to add a little pink around the edge. Okay, and it's a little different it's a little different look than what we usually get with our um, sponge daubers, but it's still kind of a nice little edge we're adding to it. And the reason I'm swirling it here on this part a little bit is I don't want it to be too bright there on the edges. I just want to help it blend in a little bit. Okay. And then when we put it down, you can kind of see that all those edges got a little extra pink around them. It's not going to do a lot to change the look of your card, but it's going to really help that blend nicely with inside when we put it in there. And then I'm going to take my little words that we fussy cut and I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm going to be really careful just to get the edges. So if you don't have your sponge daubers, but you have a blending brush, you can do the same thing. And there are uh, many blending brushes that you can get right now that would be perfect to add to your kit if you want to use. Um, I know some people use a different one for each color. I tend to use the same one uh, for a lot of different colors. I haven't found that if I if I brush most of the ink off, that the next color affects it. So we'll see on the next part here if that happens. So next, I'm going to take my Knight of Navy ink. I'm going to set this one off to the side over here. And it did get pretty pink, but it looks nice, I think. OK, so now we're going to take our pink and we're going to add a little blue to the edges. So. Just like this. And sometimes I add the ink to help it stand out, and sometimes I add it to help it blend in. It just depends on the look that you're going for. And I'm not going to do the sides, I'm just going to do the top and the bottom. I forgot to dust that one off. That one got a little uh, extra. So I might have to do, we'll just have to do a little bit more. Make sure that's kind of the same across there. All right. And then on this side, we'll kind of splash it around like this.
Okay. So this is what we come up with after we use our blending brush. And I'm just gonna um, rub it here on my piece. Okay, so now we've got our piece of this. And then I, there's one more thing I wanted to do before we put our card together. So I love, love, love this Wink of Stella. And what Wink of Stella is, is it's a glitter brush. I don't know if you can see that little, those little tiny specks of glitter in there. What I wanna do is take my, um, my circle and where it's embossed, I'm gonna kind of go along those lines. And what you're gonna find when you're done is it adds a little bit of sparkle to it. So we're just going to go along each one of those little embossed lines. And the Wink of Stella will help it help that embossing stand out even after it's dry. And I have seen um, where people ink up their their dies that also emboss, but I haven't tried that yet myself. Okay, so we've gone around each of those lines and then I'm just gonna go around the edge a little bit and add some Wink of Stella to the edge. I kind of went off there. I didn't mean to do that, but. Now the Wink of Stella brush is currently unavailable. So if you don't have one, um, you'll need to find a little different way to add that sparkle if you, if you want it. Okay, but look how it really adds just a little bit of extra sparkle. Now we are ready to put our card together. So, here is my handy dandy helper, Mortimer the turtle. He's gonna be my assistant tonight, my gluing assistant. And what I like to do is open my glue when I'm putting my card together and just stick it in there. And he does not mind a bit and it helps me uh, keep track of where my glue is for one. And, um, And it's all, it's ready to be used right away when I pick it up. So I've got my designer series paper and here is my polished pink. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue around the edges and then a squiggle down the middle. I left myself a little bit of space on this side here to pick it up and turn it over. And I'm just gonna kind of place it in the center not measuring, but if you like to measure, then you could definitely do that. Okay, so there is our first piece. And now we're going to put our ribbon on. So what we are going to do, we need some little glue dots. I'm just going to get those out. And first, I'm going to measure my ribbon along here. And I'm just going to make it a hair wider than what my card is. And I'm gonna trim off the end. And then I'm gonna put one mini glue dot on either end of my ribbon. And it's gonna be right at the very end. So I'm gonna lay the ribbon on there and then just peel off that glue dot. Turn it around to the other side, lay the ribbon on and peel off the glue dot. I know that some people pick those glue dots up and put them on their card, but I find Anytime you can peel it off, it's a little better. It doesn't lose its stickiness as much as if you were holding it or picking it off. And it's really just, it's really just as easy to peel that glue down. Okay, so now we've got our our little piece of ribbon on there. And then we didn't wrap it all the way around. So we saved a tiny bit of ribbon 
I know it may not matter to everyone, but I like to save every little bit that I possibly can. Now, we're going to tie a bow. So let's see. I'm going to zoom. I'm going to try to zoom you in so you can see how I'm going to tie the bow. Okay. I'm going to take my spool and it's, um, I've got my spool on the right and my tail on the left. So I'm going to slide that under and nope, that wasn't right. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to put the spool on the left and slide the tail under to the right. Okay. Because I find that one hand of mine works better than the other. Okay. Now I'm going to cross my spool over and it's on the top. My tail end goes over the spool end and through. No, that's wrong again. It's got to go. Yeah. All right. I'm not even going to tie a knot. What? <laughs> I'm just going to pull up a loop on the left. I'm going to go behind it with my tail end and I'm gonna tuck it through. All right, and then as I pull, I didn't leave myself very much space. Okay, you really have to, as you pull, hold them in place. All right, now this one's gotta go back on that side. And we're gonna pull that one through. And then tighten them up. There we go. And it, if before you tighten it up too tight, you can scoot that little bow right along your um, right along your base piece if you need to move it if it's not in quite right the right spot okay so now we're going to trim our ends their end looks okay now i'm going to scoot it just a little bit farther towards the center and then tighten it up okay now we're going to take this whole front piece and turn it over. We're gonna put our liquid glue on. And again, we're gonna go a thin line around the edge. Oh, I got a little too thick right there. So I'm just gonna smear it out a little. Any place where it's a little too thick or a little too much, just smear it out. And then I'm gonna squiggle down the middle. I'm gonna take this spot where I left no glue and turn it over. Then I can line that up right in the center of the card and glue it down. The nice thing about liquid glue is it doesn't dry right away. It's nice and not nice. So if you're a person who wants it to dry away right away, then it doesn't work out, but I find a lot of the time I need to scoop my paper when I'm trying to center it and it works the best for me for that. Okay, and then we're gonna put our little blue circle on some Stampin' Dimensionals. And I did find my regular Stampin' Dimensionals, finally, I don't, I think I had tucked them away in my class stuff. So there's two sizes, there's the small and the regular. And for a long time, all I could find was the small. I have ordered some more now, so they'll be coming soon and I'll have plenty of dimensionals. Okay, so we're gonna put our slightly sparkle navy circle right here. I'm gonna try and turn my bow just a little bit. I'd like it to be just a little more sideways. 
I don't know if it's going to agree to that. It doesn't look like it. All right. And then we're going to put our sentiment, right? Let's see, where should it go? I'm going to have to scoot that bow. Okay. I feel like the bows are always causing me trouble. I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one, but sometimes they're fine and other times they're just not having it, you know? There we go. That's a little better. Okay, so now I'm going to put some Stampin' Dimensionals on here. I'm going to put, let's see. I'm going to put one in the middle. And then I think, let's see. I think I'm going to need to double stack them on the ends because this one here is already on Stampin' Dimensionals and I want my sentiment to be flat. I don't want it to curve. So on the end, I'm going to put one and peel off the back and put a second one right over top. Well, it's not exactly over top, but close enough. And then I'm going to put one on the other side and peel off the back. And put one over top. Okay, so now I put it on the card. I can put it right here. And the double stacks are on the edge and the single one is right here in the middle. So that when I look at my card from the side, it looks pretty level. So there's no um, bumping up. Okay, now we've got one more thing we're gonna do. Let's see, I can probably zoom back out again. All right. And on the inside, we're going to put our, uh, I was going to say sponge, but it's not sponge. Tonight we used our uh, blender brush. So one more time, we're going to take our liquid glue and we're going to do a really thin line around the edge. The other thing you want to do if you're using liquid glue is you don't want to press this tip into your paper because that'll actually emboss your paper if you're pushing hard. Especially, um, especially your basic white paper. Okay, there's my glue. And I left a little space here for my finger. So always leave a little space for you to pick that paper up. Okay. Then we're gonna center this on the inside. And we're just gonna press that down really good. I think I've heard that called burnishing before, but I'm not 100% sure. Like when you're pressing it down and smoothing it out like that. Okay, so are you ready? We are done with our card for tonight. So this is our card. And remember, this polished pink is retiring. So if you haven't ordered it and it's still available, you should order it now if that's your favorite. And this stamp set, the Stepping Stone stamp set, is also retiring. Um, there are a lot of great sentiments on here. So there's an obstacle is often a stepping stone. I love that. Dream no small dreams, for they have no power to move the hearts of men. Wrinkles should merely indicate where smiles have been. Follow your own star. Alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. Great works are performed not by strength, but by perseverance. So these are all really good, encouraging sayings that you could send. Uh, to anyone. And, um, and I think that would be really great. I have, I really need to send some cards out this week. And so 
I may just copy this and send, uh, I might just send a whole bunch of these out. So don't be surprised if you will get a card, an encouraging card soon. Now, uh, the other thing I wanted to do was since I case this card from the catalog, I'll post this on my page, but I wanted to do another challenge. So um, if you case this card and you post it on my page, on my business page, creating in my corner, then I will enter you in a drawing for some products. So um, last time we had an entry, a wonderful entry, and, um, and Tina won the prize. So hopefully this time uh, we'll have a lot more participation. So all you have to do is copy the card design and post it on my page. You don't have to use uh, Stampin' Up! products. You don't have to use anything specific. Um, just copy the design and post it on my page. I hope that you have a great week and I will be sending out the measurements and the instructions for this, but know ahead of time that if, um, if these retired products are already sold out, then you'll have to switch them out for something else. Uh, I will. See you guys soon. Happy stamping.